Welcome back, everyone, of course, to the $500 minimum 4v4 variants here on December 13th. We're hopping in here toward our semi-final matchup taking place between Yur and Season. Of course, been able to kind of keep on board with the group on Season. Throughout their tournament, they just took out TBO, a.k.a. previously Team Blackout. Uh, three to, or to be two to one overall in that third map in our quarterfinal match. They're now looking on here in this new series. Things are fresh. And hopping on to Gibraltar as the Illy able to take out Diabolic, making it look easy inside of their window. As, uh, of course, looking on when it comes down to this particular series, of course, best of three. Map number two will be SD on Arn Forest. And if it does come down to map number three, it will be on London Docks for some capture the flag. But speaking on maps, of course, this one, Gibraltar. Wasn't really seen all too often when it came down to CDO with Dallas. A lot of the teams kind of venting to ban this one out. A few European teams kind of prefer to play Gibraltar and also Echo Fox actually ended up uh, using this map when it came down to facing off in their groups versus Optic and uh, Envious. Kind of used this as a, a secondary pick to just kind of throw teams off and uh, could definitely kind of act as that. This is a map that you're not going to see teams be maybe as well polished on as far as most strategies are considered. Just because, like I said, this is one that we're not really prone to seeing very often. Teams not the most uh, biggest fans of this particular hard point. And for good reason. Of course, it does kind of play a little bit scattered when it comes to the rotations. It can easily kind of mess you up in uh, spawns at times. It could definitely be pretty out of the ordinary. As Mochilla just happens to turn on the happy dashy, finding one onto Remy. And if you are on the side of your, you've got to be a little bit wary at the moment. Of course, we do talk about those spawns just now. Play number two and play number one. Diabolic enters in, finds one, and Cinder thankfully is there for the pickup. But just like that, they do grab the last 15 seconds of that hill, but rotations coming forward. They're actually going to be spawning toward Cave. If Cinder can maybe cut one down, he could be stopping a little bit of that push. However, Mochilla is there. Dash is joining up with this group. And, of course, rotation now coming in here toward Castle Road. And Dashi's already got streaks. Didn't even realize that the man Dashi is already on a streak. Finds two. Mochilla unfortunately shuts down Dashi. He says, there's got to be more kills for me. Sorry about that, Dashi. You're a little bit too good. But Dashy, aka Flashy, that's the nickname I'm giving him. Flashy Dashy. Dude is absolutely insane. I believe I actually saw a stat go out not too long ago. Uh, of course, talking about his search and destroy performances. Diabolic just happens to clean up the entire team. Picks up three and will actually find the entire season group. Shuts down four, but speaking more on Dashy, as you'll be calling in the glide bomb. Oh, they should all die. Oh, they actually none of them died there. I thought he was also going to get like a two or three kills there. That was pretty surprising. But yet again, another team kill coming in. Diabolic, unfortunately, will not be able to add toward his four streak. Uh, it's turning on your teammates. Unfortunately, does not add to your overall score. But however, Dashy played incredibly strong when it came to the search and destroy. Probably the best search and destroy player at CWL Dallas. Dropped 20 kills. Matching Crim 6's overall performance at the most kills in search and destroy on land. As well as, I believe, average. I want to say like a, like a kill... Like 1.1, 1.2 kills per round. That's absurd stuff, people. Over a kill per round at Cedro Dallas. Fantastic performance, of course, for this man. Current player for Enigma 6. And, uh, of course, we talked about Illy. We talked about Machilla. Not really familiar with uh, Jaden, but they're very curious to see how he does perform continuing on in this turn. Of course, got to watch him in this quarterfinal match and played incredibly well. But, of course, we do know about this other group, though. Cinder, Diabolic, Remy, and Happy. Of course, three-fourths of this team. The old DT lineup back in the day in Black Ops 3. Uh, before a pre-killer, essentially, before Happy ended up getting dropped and, of course, went to a few different teams. But this group, of course, maybe kind of coming back. Who knew, exactly knows? As uh, this currently is, I believe, also three-fourths, not, uh, not including a Diabolic, actually. Uh, three-fourths of the Amity roster, uh, excluding Mosh. So very curious to see if this is just a uh, happenstance that this group is playing together or maybe, you know, they're just kind of testing at the waters before uh, Noah does wrap around. Not a bad idea whatsoever. Might as well kind of scrim, try to get a little bit of practice in. We'll also maybe even earn some money as well. Why not do it? But uh, Happy coming in from the skies is 14 and 8. He's able to find a few with that finer pilot. And just walking into his line sights, the Illy finds two. However, Illy, currently one shot, will end up getting fall or will end up getting dropped as Remy. Actually gets another team kill. That's three team kills so far coming in for the side of Yur off the break. 
some very surprising stuff as they're currently down by 40 seconds in that rotation coming through. They've actually let a few go through the back lines. Mochilla has escaped through. Illy has as well. And it looks like player number eight, Jaden, could be contesting for spawns, but player number four is back here happy. This is a big fight to win. Can he win it? No, not going to happen. Jaden is going to be there to get cut down immediately, and you see that back spawn coming in for the side of Yur, having to make their way from that roadside. They have to try to enter in. Can they get here in time is the thing. Can they even make somewhat of a push? Because every time they die, it's a good seven to eight seconds along with their death. It's going to make things incredibly awkward. So with that coming into play, they're just kind of getting picked off left and right. As that was a huge rotation that they lost. And coming into this next hard point, a lot of people would consider that one to be the money hill of this map. Illy nearly turns on to one for Happy. And honestly, if you're in Happy's position, not that you're happy to die here, but at least you're going to get a good spawn. So we're going to see actually where Happy spawns up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he does not actually get a good spawn. Happy does not spawn up, or his teammate literally has full control. A very surprising spawn, and granted this could be a positive, because he can easily catch players... And the back lines, but no, does not make anything of it. Two players fall, and Remy somehow drops one onto Illy. They will be gaining some seconds, but a very surprising spawn coming in from Happy. And I was literally sitting on top on board with him because he's going to be having a good spawn here, but actually spawns the back lines. And honestly, while well, they're holding the spawns here, Remy is watching forward, and they have total control, but they're still spawning back here. The setup season is getting blessed right now. Absolutely blessed. And Dashy, by the way, is 26 and 11. Playing incredibly strong with an FG42, but like we said, <laughs> interesting spawns, man. This is not typical stuff when it comes in a hard point, that's for sure. But uh, Castle Road, of course, going most of the way towards season, but it went back and forth. We saw some interesting spawns, and of course, now going back toward turret. We'll see who is there. It looks like uh, Cinder waiting for that hard point time to go his way. As uh, played pretty slow off the start, now currently negative four. Trying to bring things back slowly but surely, but down by over 100 seconds. They're going to need a solid hold when it comes down to turret, and he needs his teammates to join up with him, does Diabolic. And Happy is going to making his way through middle. As Jada will be calling on the streaks. Does pick up, actually finds a headshot on Descender. That's very impressive when you get a fighter pilot headshot. How often does that happen? Not very often for those who could be curious. But uh, easy pickings right now if you are the start of season. As it's open season, quite literally, at that. Remy able to do some work from that side. Comms building. And really just isn't really going to get a whole lot of time out of this. I mean, he has two players in front of him. Might pick up one on Illy, but can't even find that. As it is 187 to 79. Second set of rotations are done. They are through. Illy just making it look easy, man. I mean, he finds two there. Illy finds two. Nearly a third just behind that rock. And thankfully, it will be Cinder who's there to pick him off to shut him down. But no room to breathe. And honestly, kind of keeping things in mind. Granted, it was a fantastic start from the guys on season. But that backside spawn toward King's Road, I mean, it was just overall, that spawn really doesn't make sense whatsoever. But them losing that as another, thats I think that's the fourth team kill that's come in, by the way for uh, the group on year, which maybe because it's not a full group, they're just not used to maybe playing with each other. Not exactly sure. I mean, three-fourths of them are actually a team in Amity, but you can kind of see a little bit maybe of the nerves. I'm not exactly sure what to kind of make of this match, but like I said, kind of coming in toward that road hard point. I mean, that was a full-on fantastic hold, a rotation that was made from the guys on year, and they just absolutely lose it for whatever reason. The spawns just do not agree, and uh, a good maybe 30 seconds end up going the way of season off of it so keeping that in mind rotation currently held when it comes in the courtyard and uh, diabolic tries to advance forward but Jaden just totally destroys him and Mochilla will hop in the hard point because of it they back him up so much in their spawn they have no longer any control player number four happy is no longer here and his teammates are dropping like flies dashy double positive right now 50 seconds inside of the hill and still spawning back Happy, finally able to join alongside the fight, but his teammates have already fallen. There's no reason to contest this one anymore. And I believe off of this hill, yes, I believe they, yes, they can actually win off of this hard point. So the boys on here have to continually contest this. As Dolly Bok finds one, needs to find this one on Tadashi, and does exactly that. 
But this is just a very difficult play for them to be made because they basically have to get from this position all the way down to here. And Happy is going to be the player who has to make that initial fight. This is going to be very difficult for him to do. However, he does pick off one on Tadashi, and Illy falls as well. So with that in mind, rotation coming forward here toward Castle Road. And they are very wary of those spawns because why they exactly do, the, do a similar thing. It could be a moment that happens at any time. So constantly watching the flank are the boys on your Dashy. Attempting to make his way through that side cut, but isn't able to make it work. And coming through middle, they have to be aware. And it looks like Di Diabolic has earned some streaks off of this, but he has to call them in soon. The rush is coming forward, and Dashy's making his presence known, shutting down a few, and only 10 seconds needed. Diabolic has to call the streaks, and here they come. The fighter pilot from above, can he shut down Mochilla is the question. No, not able to make it happen. But here comes the glide bomb. He's not even hopping inside of the hard point. Here comes the glide bomb. Can he get here in time? And it will shut it down for the moment, but they have to make the rotation now toward turret. And only two more seconds needed. Can they hop in? No, Jaden gets the 1v1 and hops in the hard point for about two more seconds as this one is through. As we're going to see the highlight play coming in from Illy. Shuts down two from the side and picks off Happy inside of turret. As a dominant game at number one victory is in the books here toward the side of SCN. As they obviously go up 1-0, to zero, winning this one at 250 to just 125. And I know I kind of talked about that, obviously, Castle Road hard point. That's a major loss for the for the guys on uh, on Euro and whatnot. But still, kind of overall, you got to be expecting that, that wasn't the main reason why they lost. It was kind of a constant fight that was taking place. It was a lot of 1v1s. I mean, we were seeing a lot through that match where we were watching Illy just totally destroy someone, or Dashi, or even Jaden. Just a fight that they shouldn't be winning, they do. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, of course, to the $500 minimum 4v4 variants. Of course, hopping in here toward map number two of our current semifinal matchup taking place between Season and Year. Of course, loading in here toward Arden Forest for round number one. It will be Year on the offense. I'm very curious to see the early strategies that come out on offense here. As I believe a smoke was tossed, Diabolic ends up finding one off the break. And now we could be quickly seeing a rotation being made back toward A. And Dash is going to be the one who's receiving this information, but doesn't spot it because he has the sniper rifle watching only one point of view. And now Ellie could be getting toward a fight. One player, actually number one, is lingering inside of Fire Alley. And Bomb getting planted inside of Cabin here for Diabolic. So two versus two. Illy finding one through that backside flank. And Mochilla, who's actually making more progression forward. Could catch off one because Remy's most likely not watching toward this close side. Most likely expecting Illy to be toward that back lane over and back bunker. So with that, a interesting offensive round that we obviously see here from Yur. They immediately make that transition toward that Ruin bomb site. And then obviously to try to switch things up early on after finding the first blood. So now looking on here for the opposite team, it will be the boys on season. Trying to test their wits here in round number two. Mochilla actually bringing this bomb pretty far forward with no smoke or any cover whatsoever. This is pretty, uh, a fairly risky situation. Of course, not the worst place to have the bomb down at, but uh, regardless, maybe if he does die in that situation, kind of leaving the bomb through middle so his teammates can grab it, maybe work toward a bomb site. But regardless, kind of an interesting play, but Mochilla picking off one. Remy's head gets ripped off on the bomb. And now a two on two. And Jaden, have to watch the flank. Gets great timing. Is Cinder. He's going to spot one and maybe spots the back, but no, decides to back up. And Jaden, being aware of such, has to be aware that anyone could be coming on a flank at any moment and just has to use the intuition that most likely he's backed up. Most likely he's not challenging this. And also finds the PPSH on the ground. So has the bomb in hand, has two weapons, either up close or at long range. And could catch off Cinder here. But Cinder just happens to back off in Fire Alley. Easy pick off. And they have no knowledge that he just could have easily backed up. And they're watching two different lanes. They're actually watching the same thing. They're watching him come from Ruins. And this is just a very well-rounded play coming in from Jaden. And Happy is just kind of checking, making sure that 
He's not lingering through mid-map. The plant goes off, and Happy has to go for the 1v1. And Happy will win it! A big win coming in, the drop shot. Bleak Glut to the second round coming in from Yur, but honestly, kind of a... I don't know how to say it exactly, but just kind of a, a lazy round, even though they end up winning it for the side of Yur. I mean, Cinder kind of gets picked off through watching through fire. I mean, he's really tossing an aid into the bomb site. And granted, with not a whole lot of time remaining, you'd think that maybe he's going for the plant and whatnot, but just no one kind of watching his back. And both of them were kind of watching that same push through mid ruins and just kind of an odd play. But now back on offense. As the last round, they found the first pick and immediately made the rush toward Cavan. It looks like we could be seeing more of the same. Same strategy, no one dropping, however. And the smoke actually gets tossed out, so Dashi is ready. Picks off Sender. And it's going for the jump snipe on someone who could be lingering inside a bunker. And now Diabolic is saying, well, all right, well, B didn't work out. Let's go to A. Okay, well, now A's not working out. Let's go back to B. And with two of his teammates dropping, it's not going to be easy for Remy and Diabolic. And with Illy pre-aiming... Immediately going for the check. As the nade comes through, but no damage done. It's a Diabolic for the fourth time. <laughs> He's debating, maybe I should go back to A. However, Dash, he might have spotted them with that sniper rifle. And it looks like, yeah, he's going to be wrapping back. Remy picks off one onto Illy. And it looks like uh, Mochilla is going to be there. The machine pistol. It's kind of like a, a Pac-Man situation. They just kind of are able to pinch them. And Mochilla's there to eat him up. And somehow picks off both of them with that machine pistol. Very good and solid work there. But you can kind of see, I mean, we were able to kind of witness it throughout that round for your, I mean, we saw them go to B. Then we saw them go to A. I mean, they just constantly couldn't make up their mind as to what bomb site they wanted to go to. And that just goes to show, whenever we have Dashy kind of holding that back line, I mean, he is just such a talented sniper rifle that within seconds, he can be inside a cabin or be inside a middle. And that's one, that's kind of two of your three lanes and immediately get cut off. And it's almost like they're going to need a sniper to try to counter him. But I'm not sure if anyone on this team has used a sniper rifle in the past. I want to say the Happy has, but I could be wrong on that. I know uh, for this old team DT, it was Chino who was a sniper player for their team. So, Regardless, looking on, Bomb gets planted inside a cavern. This is not an easy one to retake by any means. Not impossible, but definitely difficult, especially against a uh, solid unit on season. But how do they make the, their entrance... Diabolic actually shooting through the cabin, through the cabin, uh, wood. The building. He's gonna make one happen, and Dashi goes for the challenge, gets the headshot onto Remy, and where is Remy at? And Diabolic is here! The big 1v1, and Diabolic is able to win it. Remy gets dropped, and just like that, Diabolic happens to check the perfect angle. And we'll get this defused, so three rounds to one. I was talking about how difficult it is to kind of retake a site when it comes down to cabin, but... The two on two, the challenge through oh, the cabin building. Hit markers were gained, and I don't even know how that round ended up going their way, but regardless, some chaos essentially is what happened in that last round. The smoke is out. And this is the decision as Mochilla was able to find one with that pre nade. And tossing that smoke, they basically kind of limit the overall enemy's line sight as to which bomb site they could be going to because are they making a rush toward cabin or are they making a rush toward. Middle Ruin. However, the lack of knowledge definitely not uh, being found out in that round. And honestly, whenever you do toss out that smoke, it's almost like you're kind of allowing the enemy to be like, hey, you guys kind of have to back up. And it, it's what exactly they do. And essentially, the side of year just kind of walks into an FG42 with a head glitch. As Happy, Cinder, and Diabolic have already fallen in this round number five. Remy going to need to convert a one on three. And Illy is going to be there for the pickup as a smart strategy. Like I said, we've been seeing a lot of teams when it comes to Arn 4, Search and Destroy, kind of toss out that smoke toward Middle Ruin. It kind of obviously limits the sniper player, limits a lot of information through that mid-map. And obviously that particular one does not work out in their favor. So as the rounds do progress, of course, taking a look at current outliers. Remy sitting at 6 and 4, but most notably Mochilla. Sitting at 7-3, and three, having a fantastic performance in the uh, both series that we've been able to watch. As the pre-nades could land, but uh, Happy actually finding two off the start, coming from Ruins himself. He's able to do the damage necessary. And Happy might, might even want the ace, but Remy is at least is going to find one. And here's the third, the hat trick for Happy. 
and a fourth round gained at that. As the boys on your are starting to get some momentum, but I'm not exactly sure what happened in that particular engagement. If Happy just happened to catch them off guard, or you know, maybe even lined up for him, but he'll gladly take the first two kills of the round, and that obviously makes things very difficult for the boys on season. But how will they do when it comes down to this current defensive one? Dashy currently sitting at two and five, definitely not having the performance that he would like. And I believe those smokes are tossed toward mid based on what we can kind of hear from the uh, from Dashy's point of view. Dashy's going to be the only one here to kind of relay that information that, hey, they're making an A-side hit, and it looks like Happy gets dropped for the first blood. Illy finding the second. Cinder's at least able to find a fading kill, but Remy says hello to Mochilla. A sniper bullet to the face as the bomb is dropped in a very awkward spot, literally in the middle of the forest. Where Diabolic's dead body is essentially where's that bomb where's that bomb is at. And Remy's still trying to challenge. I was talking about they need to have someone face off against Dashy. It looks like Remy is answering the call, but Sender in a one-on-two. A big round for both of these teams. One that could definitely bring Sender squad back into the series and one that could potentially get the, the boys on season. And a 2-0 advantage in the series. So with that, challenging on a head glitch. Spots out one onto Illy. And Jaden, his position is known. He's actually got tagged up quite a bit. And here comes the rush from Cinder. Where's he at? Up close and personal. And Cinder will get the one versus two. A situation that never should have gone his way. Picks off one and goes for the immediate challenge. And props to this man for making it work. And Jade, in that scenario, I'm not sure if he should have backed up, but he was just trying to gain some information. And while he challenges with the PPSH, he kind of pulls his head up for a second. He immediately becomes one shot. Five rounds to two and some surprising results. I'm not going to lie. I was really expecting to see the boys on season closes went out into 2-0. But based off of what we're seeing right now, it looked to not be the case. An immediate two-on-two. Dashing Mochilla versus Cinder and Diabolic. It's obviously uh, a lot of chemistry when it comes into Cinder and Diabolic. Both players who have teamed with each other through a lot of the uh, past three years. As Diabolic picks off one onto Moch. Now Dashy left in a one on two spot. Is going to spot Diabolic. And I like the trigger discipline in the situation. Honestly, doesn't have to shoot a bullet for the next few seconds as long as he can maybe gain information on both. Butts out one of the Diabolic finds one in the center as well. Perfectly played. A big one versus two to bring his team back in this one. As Dashy takes a page out of Cinder's book and says, I know you can do one versus twos, one versus twos, and I can do it too. Great trigger discipline coming in from the man Dashy. Is now looking on toward this next round. Diabolic. Bomb in hand. And Illy finds two off the start. Granite does get dropped for his troubles, but I'm sure he'll take a kill in that particular exchange. Cinder looked to pick up the bomb, and they're still in the situation. They haven't even backed up. They're not changing up anything. It's like it's almost like in that round we see the boys on your press the pause button. They don't move after their players, after their teammates drop. And Mochilla is happy to hop on the flank. Why? Because they have the man advantage. You're quite literally just pressed the pause button and didn't move. Very odd round. As maybe just that last one, maybe some arguments kind of came forward in that last one and how they lost the one versus two. And I'm not exactly sure, but they've got to get their head on straight, man. They've lost back-to-back -back rounds. And the last one was just straight embarrassing. The smoke comes out to try to limit Cinder's overall knowledge. And with the amount of stuns and smoke thrown, he's got to expect that someone's up close and personal. But yes, Cinder is at least able to find one. He gets dropped for his troubles. And now Dashy and Jaden trying to get this bomb down here inside of Cavern. It looks like it will successfully happen. Remy lingering through middle and happy in Fire Alley. Here comes the nade. Doesn't gain any information. 
There's a big fight happening, and now here comes Remy to try to find the challenge. The call does not come in. Dashi actually ends up tagging up Remy. And here comes the kill, and yes, just like that, Dashi will fall, and Happy will be able to close this one out. I believe Dashi had just earned streaks. He had full streaks. In that scenario, I believe Dashi ends up tagging up one from the side, and Jaden doesn't even turn toward his left. He doesn't even act as if a player is getting ready to, uh, to challenge him. Kind of an odd sequence in that last round. Maybe it was just shots coming in from Happy from behind or really what the case was, but it looked like miscommunication coming at the end of that two-on-two -two fight. And like I said, I believe it was Dashy. Had he earned or kind of kept or stayed alive in that scenario, the one-on-one, -on -one, they would have had full streaks coming in toward round 11. But what was five rounds to two ends out here in round number 10, a near loss. Honestly, when the boys on yours, round by round, things started to look more grim, and I don't know, just some surprising results to say the least, but we are headed toward map number three. That will be CTF on London Docks. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's map number three. Winner moves on to the finals. Loser goes home. Of course, squads currently facing off our year and season. Yuro was able to take the last search and destroy on Arden 4, 6-4, to four. and obviously in the uh, map number one, Hardpoint on Gibraltar, were it was the boys on season who won that one in pretty dominant fashion 250 to 125 and things are already kicking off diabolic grabbing the flag for his squad and trying to make his way forward but a big nade coming in there from mochilla remy says i'm happy to pick up the pace i'm happy to try to pick up the objective and can he get here in time yes will just happen to hop on it and within the first 40 seconds a flag has already been grabbed and a flag has already been capped at that as like I said, man, London Docks plays incredibly quick. Kind of really depends on the team's pacing and uh, overall strategic communication. Is how maps like this get decided. Really, this one in Flat Tower, a lot of communication has to be used. And the Illy to the back lines finds two big ones. Drops with Happy and Remy. And has to have some teammate support. Both players coming from water side and looks like Jaden... Finds two big kills of that, four down in total, spawning the back of the base, and just like that, a flag responded on. As you see, moments like that, Illy coming from the flank and Jaden watching his pinch through Waterside is quickly able to even things up. And that's, like I said, where communication really is going to come into play when it comes into two out of the three CTF maps. Granted, of course, Arden Force plays very huge as well as Jaden shuts down yet again another two kills. But when it comes to this very fast-paced kind of overall play, everyone has to be kind of listening because you have that 7.5 respawn delay. I mean, everyone's going to be taking a while to kind of get this one back on board, but still, a lot of communication needs to be used. And Diabolic could be picking this one off just toward the last or parts. Can he find it? No, not going to happen. Dashy is here. Goals for the Dolphin Dive and also finds the kill at that. As back and forth we go, this time a flag responded from the boys on season. As right now on a 5-3, make it a 6 spree. Jaden is currently 7-2 and two and just 25 points off. An assist away from a glide bomb. And he's trying to find this one on sender. Could this nade be good? It will not be. And here comes the fighter pilot potentially. Niskus goes for the ping. And yes, we'll find that one on to sender. Granting him 2 out of his 3 streaks. Those are huge. When it comes down to just kind of limiting the players from their base. And now Remy have to try to play keep away. But it looks like he will fall. Dashy finds two. And Cinder trying to join the fight. But he's too late. He's way too late. The one coming through. Cut. Happy is here. And honestly for Dashy, go for the dolphin dive, my man. Go for the dolphin dive. Tries to re-challenge it. And the flag is still up. The flag is still in possession. Now back in the hands of Jaden. And it looks like the group from a season will add in yet again another flag capture. As three in a row for these boys. And Jaden has got full streaks to work with. Dashy holding down that backside water. Doing some damage. As now it will be the guys on Yur who are on the prowl. Up close and personal. Remy last up as Illy finds two, man. And oh my goodness. Remy able to drop one. And Illy's like, wait, where is this guy at? Oh. And it looks like, thankfully, Jaden will be there for the challenge. And has to pick up this one to Diabolic. That's a big kill to find. And no, he's not able to do it. That's a huge one versus one. But Diabolic does not know that Mochilla's just toward his right. Oh. 
literally one like just a one v one at like any point in this game can be the difference between a flag capture can be a point on the board. It's insane to see, man. And right now, you see Jaden currently sitting at 10 and 4. Holding the anchor position when it comes down to this particular map. Up close, fight! Can he find one? Yes, he's able to do it, but Diabolic, big 1v1. Having two players in front of him. Three players are dropped, but thankfully, Dashi has a fantastic spawn. And can change the tide of how this flag will go. And what's the call here from Dashi? Of course, toward the back lines there. Toward Crane. What's the call from Dashi? Trying to do some damage, but no, not able to happen. And Diabolic... Well, Dolphin dive in to bring this game within one flag. Shutting down Mochilla from behind. And trying to check his base. There's Illy, but Illy's able to stay up, man. Goes for the flag grab, but ends up dropping. Mochilla's not in a position, actually, to try to grab the flag. And just like this, Cinder's here. Cinder's here for the grab. Can he get there in time is the thing. He has some teammate control. Is there anyone to stop him is the question. But here comes the nade from Jaden, and that stops the push. It stops the push only for the moment, but Diabolic is there. Getting stunned. Can he stay alive? Tries to round the corner, and thankfully will stay up a near flag saved from Jaden. The perfect nade toss. But Diabolic is there to pick things up just at the very last moment. And just like that, we're even at three flags apiece heading in toward our last five minutes, man. Insane stuff, to say the least. And I was looking on board with Illy, and I was trying to talk about Illy, but just because of how fast the uh, this game, game in particular, this map, excuse me, moves, it's kind of difficult to talk about a certain player. But this guy, just at certain moments, can just absolutely turn up with the SMG up close. And, and fights like that, that's exactly why. Granted, he gets traded in that scenario, but just finding kills like that at a consistent basis, I mean, it's it's hard to kind of make your way in an air corridor, especially in this map, whether it's Barrow Building or in Fire. It's incredibly difficult to really get things moving forward. And I believe Streak's coming in from Jaden. And this could definitely make... The boys on your struggle, trying to escape out of their spawn, that really doesn't affect them all too much. As they find three, but Machilla's lingering in the back lines. No one falls from it. And now here comes the push for the boys on your Diabolic, the farthest pushed up. And we'll see what kind of progression they can make. As it is Dash U, it does drop one through side bus. And Remy. He's able to find one, three down. Where is Illy at? Illy's not here. He has to try to go for the sprint. Can he catch Diabolic? Can he catch Remy? Who's the flag grabber? It is Diabolic. Finds one, finds the second nearly, but no Cinder is there for the pickup. And Cinder just has to run. Turning on the Jets. Can he get here? Yes, he will indeed. A flag goes in for the boys on urine. Just like that, they are now up four flags to three. Back and forth we go. And what started very strong from your mid game kind of goes back toward the side of season. And now to the latter parts of this round number two. We see the guys from your catch a break. Is Dashy doing some work through that mid map. Three go down and now Cinder toward the back lines has to back up. He does earn streaks though. So keep in mind off of that rotation, if they can kind of keep them at bay, Cinder does have streaks to work with. So making his way forward is Jade and Illy's here for the one versus one, but not able to find it. And Diabolic with the flag grab, the flag return rather. We'll make things a little bit back, make make things a little bit easier in his team's way. So moving on, Cinder gets picked off from the side, and Remy has to watch his base. He knows that there's at least one more lingering inside a barrel building, which is exactly where uh, Mochilla was for the moment. Diabolic there to kind of pick things up. Goes for the quick return, and honestly, if you're the boys on uh, season, you have to be wary of when you grab that flag, because I know it's kind of difficult for them, because every time you grab the flag, I mean, honestly, if you just round a corner, you could that could be the difference between you getting a flag in and not, but kind of getting that flag out and honestly having it like a few inches from their base, that's a free, you know, return capture points that you're giving to the opposition for their streak, so... A lot of teams could definitely give that to their anchors if their anchor if their anchors are kind of building up streaks, you know, kind of 
holding a backside position. They kind of find a few. Having the enemy grab the flag for the second actually isn't a bad strategy because that can kind of add to their glide bomb, their fighter pilot potential. But a minute and 30 left in this map as Diabolic holding that position here just toward coal room as he's able to make it work. But fight's going down actually right now. Illy, last up for his team. Ends up dropping, and like I said, 1v1s like that are huge, and Remy going big, finding two in that particular scenario, that particular team fight, is able to make a flag, stay up, and die ball at great trigger discipline, able to shut down one from behind, and honestly, if he rounds the corner, he could be good. He has Remy's, Remy's support, goes for the challenge onto Jaden, and now just has to go for the run. Player number one, Illy, lingering through mid-map, he ends up dropping, but player number three is Dashy. He's here, he's in the back lines. And his position is going to be found out. He is known. And just like that, having to go for the rush, Remy's going to go go for it. And just like that, that could be the nail in the coffin for this series. As it's now five flags to three. Illy gets picked off. Streaks earned for Remy. And Season has to make a push, but three go down. And Jaden is in a position to try and at least challenge one. But he has to make map control. He has to move his position forward. And he gets picked off by Remy, who calls in the streaks. They have to at least get on a flag now. And Illy's going to honestly just have to brute force his way onto this one. Finds one, can't find the second, and Jaden's not here for the challenge. And just like that, CTF gets closed out here from the boys on Yur. As they win this one 5 2 3. And overall, 2 to 1 in the series. And I'm not going to lie, coming into this map. I really was counting at the boys on your. I was saying when it comes down to these very, you know, kind of up close, personal fights, the SMGs are going to be difficult for them to kind of counter against, but they were able to do it. Plus, you got to keep in mind the communication, the overall uh, chemistry that comes with having three fourths of your team. And the Diabolic and Cinder and Happy, you've obviously already played with each other in the past back on DT. They've got a lot of that chemistry, and they got a lot of that communication that really comes into fast-paced maps like CTF here on London Dock. So with that, they will advance forward to our final for tonight. Of course, we're going to see who they will face off against uh, when it comes down to it. But I believe the other semifinals currently lined up at 1-1. One to one. Still, obviously, we'll be able to figure out who uh, will win that one and face off against this group in the finals. But still, a surprising result. Uh, we will not be seeing season in the finals here for tonight. Uh, but uh, we'll be seeing the, go the guys on your Diabolic, Cinder, Remy, and Happy. Of course, congratulations to those guys. But still, looking on here, we're going to give a quick shout to our sponsors before we do head into what will be our final matchup of the night. Now, shout to Origin PC, Aquar Clothing, Scuff Gaming, and Zowie, our brand by BenQ. Major thank you to, of course, you guys for staying on board with us so far throughout the night. Hopefully, you guys have obviously enjoyed the coverage for the 4v4 $500 minimum. Say it out loud Like you really